In a perfect world, your neck would look something like this when you walk or run. A nice, healthy shock absorber system bouncing and gliding smoothly with a nice, healthy forward arch. This is what we hope to improve in your neck. Okay, we're talking about the neck. Neck and shoulder problems. And I'm going to be following the sheet that we've handed out to you at our office. And I've tried to cover the main points that I teach regarding the neck and shoulders. There are other modules that I've videoed. One is for the mid-back, mid-spine, and one is for the lower back, which involves lifting technique. But right now we're going to talk about neck, neck and shoulder issues. For people who have neck pain, uh, pinched nerve in their neck, degenerated disc in their neck, no matter where you are, first and foremost, it's important to get it properly diagnosed. If you have radiating symptoms going down your arm, including pain or numbness, any type of thinning of the disc cushion in your neck, it's important to diagnose the source of your pain or your symptoms. That would involve a proper examination in history, possibly taking x-rays, which I do here, and possibly an MRI or other type of imaging. Sometimes a referral to a neurosurgeon or an orthopedic surgeon uh, might be necessary. Sometimes um, problems can be helped with relatively simple techniques, which we'll be talking about here in the office. Sometimes it requires a certain type of traction. It's a decompression, specialized type of computerized, kind of a, a high-tech rack, so to speak, for your neck. And so, depending on what we discover through your analysis and diagnosis, then we determine what's the, what the best treatment is. But in the meantime, my philosophy is if you can help something with a solution that's simple, start with that first. So we're going to start with the real simple ideas. Most people don't realize that they often are their own worst enemy when it comes to their pain. They run to a doctor to get something fixed and yet they don't realize that it could be something very simple that they're doing at home or something that they're doing um, when they're sitting at their computer uh, or something they're doing when they're just relaxing on their sofa, it's just sitting on the couch watching TV, um, that could be causing their problems. So let's make sure we're covering the simple things first and foremost. So that's what we're talking about. Uh, first, let's talk about when you're in severe acute pain. Now I'm not going to read this whole sheet to you, but basically it talks about just a few rules to remember. Um, don't try to stretch through severe pain. One of the most common mistakes people make is that they tend to take a mechanical or structural problem with their spine and they make a false assumption. The false assumption is if I could just stretch this thing out, I could fix it. That is a fallacy. In fact, if you have a mechanical problem with your spine and the joints of the spine are fixated, and especially if you have a, a herniated disc or a weak disc in between the bones causing nerve irritation or, or a pinching of a nerve, the last thing you want to do is try to force your spine to do something that it is not ready to do. Uh, you want to make sure that the individual moving parts of your spine are functioning well enough so that when you do stretch it's not counterproductive because you could be working against me if you're trying to stretch. I cringe when I go into the gym and I see somebody uh, with a kink in their neck and they have a trainer and they're pressing their head and their shoulder going stretching it down. Big mistake. Don't play around with these things. You need to have a proper workup, a proper diagnosis. Um, don't try to force something that doesn't want to be forced or would be counterproductive to be forced. So that's my first thing that I'll say. Don't try to stretch through um, those types of problems. Stretching, there is a time for stretching and certain maneuvers, but you want to do it in the proper sequence. First, you want to get the individual links working well. Uh, this says it's better to use gentle motion maneuvers to stimulate spinal resilience and to pump the hydraulic shock absorption properties of the spine and discs, for example, Take the tips of your fingers. Now this is a simple thing that anybody can do. And I'm going to come a little closer so you can see. And I say simple because it is simple and it's safe to do no matter who you are. The idea is you want to take the individual segments of your spine 
and get the individual segments functioning better. So I'm going to qualify my statement. What I mean by that is instead of doing a hard stretch, I would rather you do a very gentle segmental movement. So the idea, if you look at this little model, each individual bone is like a link in a chain. <clears throat> Our goal is to get each link functioning better. When the spine is functioning well, it's like a machine with individual little motors, little areas we call a fulcrum, that are all working together. In fact, these, each bone in your spine is called a motor unit because when it's functioning properly, it acts as a, a, a tiny little part to the overall machine that when it's not working right, it's quite weak and dysfunctional. When it's working well, it's quite strong and resilient. So it's okay to do a little, what I call a, a segmental maneuver. What I mean by that is, what you'll do is you're going to take your fingertips and you're going to bring them together and reach down kind of low to the second or third rib and you're going to press in a little bit. Now watch my neck and you're going to do a little bit of a back and forth movement. And each time I go back and forth, I, drum, I move my fingers up a notch. See how my fingers are going up, 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 up. And you can go all the way underneath the skull. Now, notice that I am not forcing my head way back. Not. This is designed to be an interim segmental stimulation of the links in your neck. Seven major links from your skull to your first rib. So, you know, one person said this is kind of like a pigeon when a pigeon walks. What I mean by that is your head is going to be mostly staying somewhat level. There's a little bit of up and down movement to your head, but for the most part, it's a translation of the head front to back as your fingers press in. Back, back, back. Each time I'm jumping up a segment with my fingertips. And you'll notice I'm not throwing my head around. I'm not trying to do a hard stretch. Always protect the spine. It's better to err on the side of protecting the spine than trying to force something into a, an extreme motion that it's not ready to do yet. So, up, up. Uh, take it, and you can do that throughout your day. The safe part to this is that you're not forcing anything, you're getting the individual links to move better, and that's a safe thing to do. Now, stretching wise, I would not recommend that you do a hard stretch, especially in the early stage or especially in a painful stage. Isometric exercises are good and they're safe. Isometric means if you're going to turn to your right or to your left, you would put your hand there and press against your hand and hold, count to 10 and relax. Going to your left, press to your left, relax and hold. Isometric means you're not going through the full motion. You can do this in all six directions, right, left, tilting back, tilting forward, and then tilting sideways, ear to shoulder, and sideways, ear to shoulder each time counting to 10. So that's okay and safe to activate the muscles. Then later on, as we get the, your spine functioning better, then you can actually do something that would be uh, more along the lines of a traditional stretch, which we can talk about at a later time. So take it easy. Please don't force anything.